Okay, I'm so glad you're here, Maddie. I'm just adding you. Send send a request, Maddie. Yay. Hello. Hi, Leah. Hi, Nipi. Gotcha. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I was so excited and I was so nervous because some days the Wi-Fi acts up, some days the sound isn't very good and I was like, let me go on a little early and just start the conversation to see if it's going okay. And it seems to be going fine. And then Archana, you know Archana Panya, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. she saw... Yeah, so she's super excited that both of us are going live for the first time. <laughs> so they're like, so they are, I, 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 yeah, I am, I, I am nervous because of more than one reason. One, I think we are on the screen together for the first time after an Ayatrabil Meh. We've never done an interview or an ad or nothing together. Secondly, I don't think you look a day older than the first day I met you. And that's a big problem. Oh. Uh, because you look charming and as beautiful as ever, my, my lady. So uh, both of that makes me very nervous. And plus, from messages announced this interview, people have been sending Satsukya Radhiwana and Zara Zara songs to me, trying to tell me that we will we'll catch you up <laughs> with this interview. It's crazy. Really crazy. <laughs> But I'm gonna, yeah, like, you know, I'm, so, I, right. it makes me so happy to see you right now, Maddie. You know, Thank you. I don't know what, uh, I, I really, words are not adequate to express, um, just the, the power of this, just being able to see each other, you know, yeah. and be able to connect at a time like this. And, um, I'm really happy that we're meeting like this for the first time with so many people joining us to talk about something that we've never spoken about together. You have, uh, I've of course been, you know, championing nature for years now. You have done it in your own way. And I really wanted to talk to you about some of that because I think for many of us that live in the cities that are living in like an urban setting, we're all kind of wondering all the time, how can we coexist better with nature? How can we find ways to live in better harmony with nature? And these conversations down to earth with Dee have been about this, you know, Maddie, just getting people the chance to engage and interact with real life solutions, real, real life understanding lessons. So I actually want to start from the beginning because you've had an amazing journey so far. You've traveled, oh, you've lived in different parts of the country, you've lived in different parts of the world, you've had such varied life experiences, um, even through the characters that you've played. But I'm, I'm, I want you to start with Jamshedpur. What was it like growing up in Jamshedpur, uh, in a simple Tambram family, eating vegetarian food? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to jump right into it. I think uh, I've had the best childhood that anybody can imagine having. I grew up in a small town called Jamshedpur, Tata Nagar at that point of time. And it was a small town. And I think it was such a small town and so impactful that I've always carried that small town boy attitude with me uh, till date. And it served me well. Mm. Um, being a small town boy means that, you know, you're more aware of everybody around you. Unlike a big metropolis, uh, you know, you have to be involved with your neighbors' lives. You have to be involved with your with your friends' lives to an extent that today it seems almost interference. But at that time, it was considered caring. And when you're in a small town, one of the things that you become part of is nature, is the the geography of the place, the flora and the fauna becomes part of your upbringing. Um, you know, the, the you know the the years of wiring and uh, conditioning that you get in a place like that if you spend especially I spent 18 20 years there you learn to respect or disrespect uh, things depending on how uh, the people around you reacted to it and thankfully for me uh, the Tatas ran the city and from very earlier on in my life I remember I remember the importance of them trying to say the importance of greenery 
you know, they would insist on planting trees because it was a steel city. It was a city that was very, um, you know, alluvial soil. So uh, we had the best soil, but it was still an iron ore and steel and rustic sort of a city. And they intended to keep it green. So I remember the Jubilee Parks, which we used to have, which are huge botanical parks that we used to roam around, took that for granted. Mm. And uh, most importantly, um, I mean, anybody from Jamshedpur will tell you, we used to wake up to the sound of vacuum cleaners on the road, you know, uh, at that time uh, in early 80s. Um, you know, uh, we actually had vacuum cleaners that would clean the road. And I used to think that's how the rest of the world is before I traveled. It's only when I left. Oh, rest of the I, countries. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rest of the world. Forget about the country. Rest of the world, I used to think. Uh, and then it's only when I left Jamshedpur, uh, you know, on trips to South India and other parts of, uh, you know, vacation that my parents were very kind enough to take us and privileged enough. I realized, my God, I'm living in an extremely privileged place because the sanitation, the, the town planning, everything was so different compared to Jamshedpur. I don't know if you know, but it's uh, one of the first planned cities of yes. the country. So the like main Chandigarh. roads, like Chandigarh. Chandigarh and Jamshedpur, yeah. So... The lanes used, the main roads used to run from east to west. The by lanes used to run from north to south, like it is in the US. The wind used to clean the streets and cleanliness and greenery was a very integral part of our culture, of our, of our livelihood. And uh, I remember uh, I have had the privilege of playing in the streets uh, from Gulli Danda to uh, Kancha. Did you climb and... trees like me? Oh. Huh? Pluck fruit from trees, ah. eat them directly from the tree. Stole Aam it. Churai, chiku churai, Aray, chha, malab, churai. Jamun, aam, <laughs> Jamun churai. Malab, ah, 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 kya, malab, bhel. Humne, malab, sab, aur sab se badi baat hai, ye jab chot lagti di. Haan. Haan, yaka lagi, yaar, mitti lo, pot lo, aur langrati ve chalo, tindar baat thik ho jata tha. Haan. तो मतलब कितने चोट लगते थे घुटनों पे बाप रे पेड़ चढ़ मतलब वो तो बाद में कॉलेज में आके पता चला कि टेटनस कोई चीज भी होता है कि भैया अगर रस्टिक चीज से अलग जाए तो आप टेटनस इंजेक्शन ले लो हमें तो मतलब हमने सब कुछ किया यार चोट और चोट लगती मुझे याद है कि खेलते खेलते एक जंगल जब हुआ करता था मेड ऑफ आयन यू नो दो थिंग्स दैट यूज टू क्लाइम एंड एवरीथिंग एंड आई फेल ऑफ एंड आई ब्रोक माय हैंड इन थ्री प्लेसेस एंड आई एम अफ्रेड टू टेल माय मॉम बिकॉज़ शी इज लाइक Huh, and I came home and my mom's like homework earlier and I'm trying to you know do the homework with my hand broken and it is swollen up and then uh, she made me uh, to, uh, you know being tough was just the way you were supposed to be it was just part of our uh, lives and um, most importantly I lived in a city which was volatile there yeah, you know in the sense that our school na kai baar ruk jate the kyunki communal riots shuru ho jate the kabhi bhi aur और ये हमारा एक जिंदगी का हिस्सा बन गया था जमशेदपुर में और काफी खतरनाक हुआ करता था वो तीन तीन चार चार महीने के लिए स्कूल बंद मुझे हमेशा ना समझ में नहीं आया कि हो क्या रहा है मैं बच्चा रहा यार आठ नौ साल आठ नौ साल का तो मुझे पता था कि हम लोग सब एज अ कम्युनिटी मतलब बाहर में तो कह रहे हैं कि भाई कम्युनल राइट्स हो रहा है पर कम्युनिटी के हर एक हिस्सा हमारे साथ रहते थे हम लोग साथ में चुप कर बैठते थे और ये उम्मीद करते थे कि कृषि को भी लिफ्ट हो जाएगा फिर हम बाहर चले जाएंगे और उस दौरान हमने क्या क्या सीखा एक दूसरे से यू नो हर एक देशिंग टू एवरी एक्सपीरियंस हम शोर लाइनिंग टू दिस टू दिस कोविड इरा एज वेल But for us, you know, in the, in terms of adversities, you learn so many new things, and I'm very thankful for those life experiences that only a small town can give us. Yeah, it, I think it keeps us rooted and connected with not just. I, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine last night, and he was telling me that um, environmentalism is really nothing but a reminder for all of us that all life is connected. यू नो जो रिश्ते इंसानों के बीच बनते हैं वैसे ही रिश्ते कुदरत और इंसान के बीच में बनने चाहिए एंड व्हेन यू बिकम सेंसिटिव टू दैट सिंबायोटिक नेचर दैट रिलेशनशिप यू जस्ट बिकम अ बेटर पर्सन यू नो यू आर यू आर मोर इंक्लूसिव टू एवरीथिंग इट्स अ वेरी लवली पॉइंट टेल मी हां अच्छा यू आर सेइंग नो नो आई आई वांट टू आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन प्लीज गो अहेड गो अहेड आस्क द क्वेश्चन Okay 
um no i want you to respond to what you were saying i'm sorry I, this needs to be as free flowing as possible it's not a q and a it's no i know so um, yeah i think this the the the, uh, the covid era and what's happening around the world today has made everybody take a deeper look at themselves more than anything else and um, a lot of priorities are coming clear becoming clearer as you go along and i think one of the things that everybody is realizing is it's really important to be in touch with who you really are what really makes sense and without a doubt without a doubt for any any it doesn't matter which community which religion you belong to eventually everybody says you have to be one with nature to be at peace yeah. and if you don't have that ask anybody who has grown their first vegetable at home and consumed it okay ask anybody who has actually had a garden that has been infected with insects and the kind of agony they feel for the for the first time when they get when it gets infected and multiply that by a million times to know what a farmer feels yeah and then you become compassionate to your farmers you become compassionate to the agriculturists you become compassionate towards people who are doing selfless service for animals around the world and you'll also understand uh you know in your lives in terms of just balancing you out uh i don't know if how many of us have privilege enough to actually walk amongst trees or how many of us have had the privilege of actually actually walking on grass uh you know in in the few uh, i mean before the covid era you're just walking on grass and you'll realize you're not capable of walking on grass anymore you've been walking with shoes so much that your your feet are so sensitive that you can't do something as simple as that so for me as an actor when i see a song in a movie of beyond the years and i see the heroine or the heroes singing and dancing barefoot because they are part of a village or or a small town it hurts me just to look at them and i realize how far removed i am from just having to put my feet on the ground and and that's not a that's that's not a way to be because uh, one of the most important acupressure points of your body is on the bottom of your feet and you need yeah. to walk on this sorry i can't i can't begin to tell you how deeply what you just said resonates with me and how i've learned it and understood it a lot because like everybody else you know you grow up and life takes over and you move cities and you know work takes over and uh, i actually found my way back to nature in 2008 and 9 and started working with wildlife organizations for wildlife protection but that really started with going to the forest and over the years madi i've managed to bring the forest to me living wonderful in, yeah living in mumbai um i've grown these biodiverse plants in my windows so they attract birds and bees and butterflies and uh, they 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 pulsating with life so i literally call them my windows to life nice and the other privilege that i managed to uh, gain access to at a very young age is i bought a home in a building that has a garden and it meant so much to me at that age you know when when i got this place because it reminded me of hyderabad you know the fact that there were trees and there was greenery yeah. and every window i looked out of i could see green and i spent my mornings in the garden bare feet walking on the grass madi there you go every day almost every day of my life and i can't tell you how much it centers me how much it grounds me um <coughs> and i want to i want you to talk about the fact that you are a farmer <laughs> <laughs> I don't think many people know that you are an urban farmer. You've been growing your own vegetables. I've been looking at those videos and pictures for years now with absolute envy because it's something that I really want to do but haven't gotten around to doing yet. But this time during this lockdown, I've become so acutely aware of how important and urgent it is for us to also start urban farming. you know to just be able to start growing our own food as well bolo bolo so, farmer kaise bane <laughs> pehli baat to dia first of all i am in huge admiration of you you are one of those people who actually walk the talk uh, i have seen you uh, get involved with uh, environmental activities and not just a pretty face uh, trying to promote a cause you have actually dived into it and i have seen all that you managed to achieve 
truly envious and have a lot of respect for what you're doing. I love to see people who actually mean what they say and say what they mean. And you're one of those ladies. That's phenomenal. Secondly, yeah, you know, um, I realized I have a friend of mine who actually got this, you know, the greenery bug uh, instilled in me. You know, he had a, he has a house in Malaysia that I used to play. You know, I was, I'm a golfer, so we spend a lot of time in nature anyways. But when I saw what he was, cap- he was talking about, I felt very excited because he said, there is a process when called hydroponics. This? When was this? This is about eight, eight, eight years when ago. When was this? Eight years ago, in about okay. 2002, 12. So he said that there's a process called hydroponics where you don't, you can grow plants without having the requirement for soil. You don't have to actually need soil. You can grow it with water and put nutrients in it. For me, being a science guy, I'm like, oh, is that ever possible? And I did my research and I realized it was kind of possible. And it was actually quite an amazing way that a lot of people who didn't have fair weather throughout the year were growing vegetables. So I decided to see if I can do it in Bombay, if I can start a hydroponic uh, garden on my terrace in Mumbai. And so I got the things uh, that I, you know, that they were supposed it's to do. It's my patch some... of envy. Full yeah, envy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so I started it, you know, I fumbled and, you know, found it for a bit. But over, over a period of time, I got this set up and I got the uh, nutrients I needed and I started growing it. And then when the plants started to grow and through hydroponics, they grow faster. I was, uh, I was like, is this right? Is this, is there something wrong with what I'm doing? Because you can't help n- nature grow faster. And then I realized that maybe some of the stuff that I'm putting in the water as nutrients are not, are, are synthetic. So I decided to go for organic, uh, uh, you know, uh, nutrients to be put in the water. And I can't tell you how nature was just looking for a chance, just a little bit of love and care. And by the end of five months, I had, I had uh, capsicum, I had onions, I had garlic, I had 16 different types of tomatoes, I had musk melon, I'm sure you've seen the videos, watermelon, I had, uh, you know, a rich, you know, rich gourd, we had snake gourd, we had, uh, uh, you know, kundru, uh, 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 cauliflower, uh, a, a broccoli, Did all you know chilies, harimitsi? Chilies are, like, you know, harimitsi. chilies are actually, jo hum bachpan mein na, jo hum bahar, malab, bartan dhoke, wo bartan dhone wala paani aisa phek dete the na, Chili ka bija tha, usse plant ruk jata tha, yaar. You know, they used to be so potent. Humko abhi Kari patta, kari patta. Kari patta, ah, ye sab to aise hi ruk jayenge. Papaya, papaya bhi badi aasa. Mere, ab, mere ghar pe uh, ugta hai ye papaya. Abhi wo jo garam dekh rahe ho, pichhe mein sare papaya se, malab, Now you've converted all your balconies into your urban farm. Yeah, so I'm very excited. So, and then many ek baat, I, I learned something which is very important. Ki you've got to eat seasonal vegetables. So don't don't eat uh, you know uh, 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 genetically modified vegetables that are provided to you through year round. There's a season to eat um, capsicum. There's a season to eat brinjal. There's a season to eat lady's finger, aubergine, everything you know. And if it's the right season, oh, pach bhi jata hai. You know, it, it digests beautifully. It doesn't stick to you. Uh, you know, you feel better. I uh, don't feel uh, you know. Uh, so I have become a fan of urban farming and. Uh, also rural farming. And I think by growing my own plants and my, you know, at least 60% of own my food. vegetables grow own food. Uh, so be it herbs, be it salad, uh, be it vegetables or fruits. Uh, my, more than anything, my respect for the people who actually grow it, uh, the, the agriculturists, the farmers, that's just, that's just gone through the roof. And I've been trying my best to see what I can do for them. So much so that I've actually experimented with farming. Yes, I'm going to talk to you about that in a bit. But before we get to your farm, before we get to the Mm -hmm. farm, I want you to share with us how many, like at an average, you grow your vegetables and hydroponics on your terrace. On an average, how much produce do you get? Like, is it enough for you all to cook like a full meal regularly or do you still need to buy from outside? What's the... It's enough. Our household consists of about... Yeah, so our household consists of about six people. And uh, I grow enough uh, vegetables to feed us for at least three to four days in a week. So we need to wow, supplement that. Maddie. Yeah. Yeah. So we eat. I mean, be it. Uh, I like the board. background score. Maddie. Maddie. Oh, oh, <laughs> what are you going on right now? I, so I what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. Yeah, it's so I. Amazing. 
So I used to put uh, my, you know, the daily uh, harvest, as I used to call it, uh, on my Instagram. And then, uh, and then people started following it and people are now growing it themselves. It's, and it's fantastic. It's fantastic. And you learn how to take care of it. You realize like, you don't need insecticide. You can just take neem oil and spray that. It works as good as an insecticide. You don't need to put natural, uh, fer- I, I know, uh, sorry, uh, chemical fertilizers. You can use natural produce. You can use, you know, uh, compost, compost, all that, you know, how to make it and how to use it. Really uh, phenomenal. It's amazing. And I'm totally going to do this and I'm going to totally take all Any the pointers that I have to from you. Sure. Get this going. Because now I'm like resolute. It has to happen. It's yeah. to- on top of my like things to do in life. Maddie, how does uh, Vedant respond to all of this? I think, you know, when, when parents set an example through the actions and the choices they make, it inspires children in unique ways. And I know for a fact, I mean, the science says it, psychologists say it, that when children engage and interact with nature, it has a very profound impact on their mental health, positively, <clears throat> obviously, uh, on their physical health, on uh, just the kind of human beings and the kind of values they imbibe in and, and you know, have. Have have you noticed something that you would like to share about Vedant? Yes, of course. Uh, we've always been a household of animals and we've kept animals that have largely been discarded by other people. And so Vedant has had the privilege of growing up with dogs and, you know, uh, uh, parrots and stuff like that, that we've managed to rescue. And I think we've learned more about how to be humans from our animals. And it's an amazing lesson for any child. You know, you see your parents and your, your, you know, your mother and father go through the stress of life. There are arguments, there are fights and there are debates. But, you know, you could get angry with your dog in the morning for being a naughty boy. You come back in the evening, he's forgotten all about it. He's still wagging his tail and he's telling you, hey, you know, I'm there, give me a hug. I'm right there for you. And such an amazing lesson to let big be big on and move on with the people that you love. You know, it really don't carry residues of any argument or negativity along with your life. I think Vedant has hopefully imbibed that. Now, I, I don't want to jinx it, but I do know that my son loves animals. He's and a great I think, kid. He's God one please. of the most compassionate, beautiful boys ever. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> I think that's all, all credit to Sarita. Uh, I just uh, do my philosophical talking in front of him, and I, I hope he imbibes what I'm talking. Uh, but I think I've, you know, I've become... Uh, I wish I could be a better father, but I take my time to spend, uh, you know, as much as I can with him talking about what I have learned and what, you know, kind of stuff that I, my dad taught me. I remember, I remember this is going to be very strange, but I remember when he was six years old, he sat me down and he said, Papa, I want to talk to you. And I said, yeah, he says, Papa, you're not spending quality time with me. This is not fair. And I said, come here. What do you mean? I'm not spending quality time with you. He says, where did you learn this quality time period? Where is this, you know, which serials are we watching on, on, on uh, you know, the, on the platforms to understand this world called quality time that you have to spend with your father? I said, I, I can't take you fishing. There is no fishing here in India right now in Bombay. And, and my father never spent great quality time with him, but I love him dearly. Okay. He used to spend just the right amount of time when he had the time. And he imbibed with me the kind of qualities that I have today. And I love him. And I said, Vedan, if you can love me half of as much as I love my father then I will be privileged. Please remember, it's not quality time. Don't, don't let Western uh, you know, philosophies make you feel inadequate. I'm there for you. If you need me, I'm going to be there for you. And I, there are things that you have to learn on your own. So please do that. And I think he understood. There was something crazy about the way he looked at me. And he said, you're right, Papa. And we've never had that conversation after that. He knows that I work and my job takes me around the world and do what I do. And so there is a huge... Uh, uh, and so I think that... Ability to understand and uh, what I was trying to say comes from the fact that he understands how animals are. So, you know, we go out for a holiday, uh, maybe we've gone out for a month and you come back and we start away in the same manner. The dogs don't get upset at you for, for not being there for 25 days. You know, they just pick it up from where they are and they, and they show you that it's possible to be even more happier uh, with what we have right now. And I think uh, I, would, I would highly encourage everybody to take up pets in, who are, you know, rescue pets if possible. And they will teach you amazing things. And, uh, and I have a lot to learn from animals. And I think Vedant has learned a lot. Oh, most definitely. I think we all learn a lot from animals. Yeah. 
um, and especially when we can rescue them and bring them home. I think adopting yeah. pets is like the most amazing thing. Yeah. Um, both of you won PETA uh, Person of the Year, People of the Year, right? Vedans yes. won it as well in one year, and you have uh, most compassionate kid. I think uh, what Vedant used to do for the first uh, ten years of his life is he never celebrated his birthday. He ins oh he whenever he did he would uh, ask his friends to donate the money to PETA instead of giving gifts. So I think they kind of appreciated that. <laughs> Okay, you and Sarita are just yeah. gorgeous, and this child of yours is even more beautiful. God's grace, um, God's grace, yeah. <laughs> so, what led you to? I know you were very inspired by the plants you were growing, the food you were growing at home, and that obviously made you a lot more sensitive to a farmer's life, a farmer's plight. Mm -hmm. uh, and then <clears> that led you to. Turning a farmer yourself, like growing in a larger piece of land. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So um, there were a lot of uh, there was a, a barren piece of land uh, in the south of uh, India that we had seen. I think and, that's uh, a key word. I was actually trying to jog my memory about what what you shared with me because that's what fascinated me the most about it. That it was a barren plot of land that you took up as a challenge. And you yeah. So yeah. So although it was sold as a farm. It hadn't been not, nothing had been cultivated for twenty years, and uh, so uh, it was close to a good source of water. And uh, you know, it was. Uh, I was wondering why people were not growing things, and things around that area were, you know, as it is kind of dwindling in terms of uh, agriculture. So uh, we decided to test the soil, uh, you know, for the alkalinity and and see what kind of a uh, you know composition the soil had, and see what would grow best. And we decided to see if we can grow coconuts. You know, you know. Uh, uh, you know, and that to native coconuts, uh, which can grow at a at a uh, lower height and have a year-round uh, uh, harvest, if possible. So you I tried to identify things that will grow and started experimenting. And soon enough, in about three four years, we suddenly realized that whole place was lush green. Uh, we realized that we can grow, grow coconut trees and grow vegetables under it, and what kind of vegetables grow better, and which uh, uh, vegetables are you know uh, help. In the coconut growing better, and which coconut uh, you know uh, uh, sapling is best for growing with uh, herbs or with uh, salads or that kind of stuff. Which fruit trees complement each other in terms of their growth and what they contribute to the soil? And I realized that you can create an ecosystem that can be hugely beneficial uh, uh, to the farmer. There was no doubt whatsoever that I did spend a lot of money on it, which normally a farmer may not be able to spend. Okay, but for me, it was an experiment to show that the land is capable of of producing this. It was yeah. a, it was a, you know, and so uh, if somebody says, was it a profitable venture? I'm not. My point was not to show if it was profitable, honestly. My point was to show that if people believed in it, if the government believed in it, you could make a in a fertile land into a flourishing, luscious, green, uh, you know, environmentally correct sort of a, a, a piece of land that will eventually turn profitable to any farmer who, 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 who uh, you know, pro follows the process. And we are still experimenting. We're still in the process of it. But we got, I got to say that you've got spectacular results. And it's so exciting that you're doing this because this is really where we've, where we've come from. Uh, traditionally, this is how we farmed. And it's time that we go back to this kind of farming because industrial farming is creating all kinds of chaos as we know so the so best part is kind of farming. yeah ah. sorry to interrupt you the best part i forgot to tell you the best part is <laughs> so now all the surrounding farmers are now taking interest in their own land people who had just bought it and left it there because it was barren in their opinion they all came back and says hey so how did you do it like how did you um, you know, make sure that this happens and how do you, you know, source the water and which solar fences are you losing and which solar, uh, you know, uh, energy source are you using? What are you, which kind of fish are you putting in the pond so that it, you know, it, the, you know, the nitrogen balance is maintained. So now they're learning and they're imbibing and they're, they're, they're doing that. So now the whole area is beginning to flourish. And that is a, that was, that is beautiful for me to see. That's the best part. That is just yeah. so amazing. And I hope yeah. the government is equally inspired, just as the as your name. The government has been, is. yeah, they've been good. They've been honest. I mean, you know, the, to tell you that they are. So we don't take any subsidies in our farm, uh, thankfully, because I've been blessed with the money. We don't need that. But they're actually the government has done great amount of uh, jobs in trying to make sure that everybody gets electricity, that there is a process in place for you to get your 
uh, you know, fertilizers from them and make sure that, you know, there's a process of taking the coconuts and all that. Actually, they're doing it. We are an agricultural country. And I think the more technology that they're able to take to the farmers, I think with the more stronger a nation will become. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. and the more balance we will be able to bring, you know, when we talk about the sustainable development goals, this is actually such an integral part of bringing back that balance. But it starts with that relationship, which you have illustrated, walked the talk, lived the truth, lived by example. You keep yeah. saying these things for me, but I think it holds so true for you as well, Maddie, in so many ways. You're just so special. Yeah. Thank you. Ha. Should we go on? We can talk forever. <laughs> I know. I mean, I think uh, uh, um, one of the things that we must address in this process is Renayat uh, Radulne, because uh, I know that um, people have been dying to see us on screen. I can see the messages just relentless. <laughs> but I think we haven't found a story really, yet. That is, uh, yeah. It's and, there. Uh, we found yeah. the story. It's there. It's, Good. It's yeah. being, I can't wait to see it. It's yeah. being cultivated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it needs to be then. It's there. It has. Uh -huh. I mean, we have to work together, and we are going I to know. make it happen. This, this is a promise we made to each other, yeah. to everybody who's asking us why we haven't done a film together yet. Yeah. Please know that <laughs> we're doing our best. We are doing our best, but also we will only work together when we can give you our best. Yeah. Uh, because there is something so special about Rina and Maddie and uh, the connection that people have with Rina and Maddie that uh, we wouldn't want to, you know, dilute the opportunity <laughs> anyway. But tell me something, because Dia. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Are you surprised by the amount of messages we get about RH TDM even now? It's been close to 19 years. And somehow, I'm just uh, I, I'm just inundated with the songs and the scenes and the dialogues every day on my on my social media. Does it happen to you as well? Mm -hmm. It's overwhelming, Maddie. You know, it's um, it's it's actually very interesting. Uh, a very senior actor had once told me that blessed is an actor who is known by the name of a character he or she plays. Hmm. And even more blessed is an actor when people recognize you across ages and a, over a period of time by a film that they instantly connect you with. And I think Renai Tere has been that for both of us. So for me, uh, I can, I, I can and, understand. Yeah. Go ahead. And like, and just I, even now, like during this lockdown, there are so many people who are singing the songs at home. They're dancing. They're sharing videos. They're, <laughs> you know, it's ooh, it's just it's just so wonderful. And I think there is a there is a naivety, there is an innocence, there is an honesty and pureness that we shared in Hena Tere Dil Me that resonates so deeply with people even today. Yeah, I mean, and also I there's I a whole that. generation that was very young when they watched this film, and now they're like in their late twenties, mid thirties, and they're like, you know, expressing and discovering. Their I'm life. trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you about people who were probably not even born when Renatra Dilma was released, mm -hmm. and now they're fans of it. I mean, I just saw these messages coming up saying I was, I was a thought in my parents' groins <laughs> when Renatra Dilma was released. I'm just, uh, and then for it to make sense to them. I wish I knew the kind of responsibility that we would have we had when we did the movie. Maybe we would have done a better job of it. At least I could have done a better job of it. Um, I wish I knew that no. uh, you know this is the impact it is going to have. And it's 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 for me it's very uh, it's very humbling. I feel I feel our rawness. Our, yeah. Like I said, it was it was all of that. Just that raw abandon and that yeah. just that honesty that connects with people. Yeah. And now, though, uh, I think with our life experiences and our film experiences, hopefully we'll be able to do better justice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or else we shouldn't do it. I know. We have, we have, we have to. Yeah, leave it them. Leave them with a good taste and aspir, you know, and a yearning as opposed to oh, chhada bichare yar, bhot hai kya na? Ha, wo nahi ho sakta. 
I don't know. Hopefully that won't happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what drives you? I mean, I, I, I know you've asked me questions, but I want to ask you. You're just, you're just such a breath of fresh air every morning. You're out there. You seem to be, you seem to have a different source of energy compared to the rest of us. How do you manage that? I mean, all the goodness around you. See, I can make out it. I mean, that glow around halo and energy of, you know, good forces around you is so evident. What do you do? Oh God, Maddie, embarrassing me. <laughs> I'm like. Blushing. Uh, I don't know, Maddie. I think it's. I've never allowed resentment and bitterness to enter my heart. I always trust everybody, uh, and I trust the universe. I just do. Um, and uh, I keep life simple. You know, yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, stay rooted and connected to the core. Just find ways to reconnect with myself. I have, I have lots of friends, but I have friends who come from varied fields. You know, diverse walks of life, who keep me connected to reality. I work with organizations that keep me so in check. My reality checks on a daily basis are like intense because of this work. I think all of that, a combination of all of that. And, but I think most importantly, I feel like when your heart is open and you're willing to live and love and <clears> learn <throat> every day, you do okay. I think um, you're very modest and I think... Uh... A lot of what you've achieved is a product of your upbringing. I'm sure your parents would have imbibed all that in you. And as a result of that, the positivity is just radiant. So continue to be this charming for us. Uh, you'll always be a source of inspiration for a lot of people. I can see the comments below and it's just going crazy. And they all want to know your secret now, Dia. <laughs> yeah, my secret is just love. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but Nadi, we have to like wind this up now. It's been over half an hour and I can talk to you, like I said, forever. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure everybody's felt equally inspired and motivated by what we've shared, managed to share today in this very short uh, period of time. Leading up to World Environment Day, I'm hoping to have more conversations like this because I think it's very important for people to recognize that you don't need to be a botanist, a biologist, a scientist, an environmentalist to form a better connection with nature and just live with a little more balance. And right. um, I think these conversations will help and are helping people. They're definitely helping me. I'm learning a lot. Every time I connect with people <clears throat> I admire and I know and I learn something new. I'm actually also glad that we didn't kind of talk about what we were going to talk about because it's made it very organic. No right. pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, I just want to say one last thing before we um, wind up. I know that it's going to be a very changed world when I get out there, there. And I'm, uh, I'm going to say what I am going to do. I don't know if that's an advice. And I'm not, I'm not in a position to give advice to anybody right now. But I do know that everybody's going to come from a great place of stress. This three months has broken a lot of people, has, you know, has made them insecure about the future. You and I included. And uh, I realized that yeah, and I realized that when we go out, the one thing that will be most welcome and I think the biggest important thing is huge amount of compassion. Is is yeah. having to let people vent out what they're feeling. You know, they're not able to vent out at home, so they'll probably vent out at you. They'll probably vent out in public. They'll probably, you know, feel uh, insecure and angry when they meet. All I want to tell you all is that be aware of that and and just, just be compassionate. Yeah, Not everybody has been dealt the same amount of cards. So I'm, I've decided to be even more nicer if I can. You know, I want to be even more accommodative if I can of people's eccentricities. Uh, that's going to become evident uh, in the first few days after lockdown has been removed and you try to struggle back to normal lives. And I think it's very important that people get aware of that. You know, just be assured, just be aware that your the people who are going to come to work for you, your domestic help, your drivers, they're all insecure. They've just had a, you know, a, a traumatizing experience, much more than what you've experienced. And compassion is the order of the day. And I think we can quickly, uh, you know, uh, go back to normalcy uh, if 
if we exercise that bit of understanding oh absolutely compassion when we come out of the lockdown and more compassion even now like right now through this time towards other people and towards ourselves i think it's very important for us to remember that we shouldn't be hard on ourselves as well because this yeah. is a challenging and i'm glad you brought this up because it is mental health well week and uh, many people feel hesitant about connecting and reaching out to ask for help please guys please reach out and i hope that in a small way maddie and i have been able to bring you some happiness some joy yeah. and um thank you maddie for being a part of this conversation dear thank you pleasure entirely mine my lady you're such a darling the pleasure is entirely mine at all times give sarita and vedant and the parents everybody at home and, and the dogs give them a big cuddly <laughs> hug i will there uh, it's hard so yeah i i definitely will i will do that and um, thank you so very much <laughs> my love and regards to everybody in your so place cool. as well huh thank you thank you okay. thank you okay bye guys thank you bye everyone dear. for joining us you want to say you. something else give them your love give yes just just know. lots and lots of love and uh, see you guys very soon i'm going to do this more often now yay there you <laughs> okay. go all right <laughs> Bye dear. Thanks Mary. Bye. 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 Thank you everyone for joining us. This was so special, hai na? Um I'm going to wrap this up now. It's been a 38 minute very beautiful conversation. Maza aa gaya. Maddie rehna hai tere dil mein will always be very special. And for all of you who joined us for the love of rehna hai tere dil mein, for the love of Maddie, for the love of Reena, for uh, the love of nature thank you i hope you have a safe happy and positive week ahead lots and lots and lots of love stay safe and stay home